<laughs> let's go guys, let's go. Hello guys and welcome to kind of the end of my lap at the qualifying at uh, the Nations Cup at Lassart. So this was 24 hour of Le Mans or Lassart as it's commonly referred in Gran Turismo 7. And we had 17 laps on the circuit using these old killer machines. I'm gonna, I gotta say, this was a difficult thing to do and you also had to do the setup. And if you were wondering, this is the car that I was using. So it's the old Nissan. It's not actually that old, but it's one of the most iconic cars in Le Mans history. And it was quite challenging to drive it. And as you can see, straight from the beginning, I used DCS because I thought, you know what? The car has a lot of power and eventually my rear tires are going to spin out. And that's exactly what, what happened. And in just at the beginning, I got myself one place and then I lost one place because the other guy in front of me actually decided to use a different car that was better in the corners, but it was much, much slower on the straight. So you could pick any car out there in group one, but the most important thing was to pick the car that is going to last 17 laps and it's not going to crash. So that was the whole idea, that was the whole point. I was playing with the setup a little bit. Some of the setups that I tried, they were better. They were actually quicker, a little bit quicker than uh, this setup that I did here. And even in the end, I ended up using brake and balance minus five to save the rear tires, because when the th rear tires go off, it's definitely easier to spin in one of the corners. You will eventually see which corner it is. And yeah, this is usually where I had a little bit of problem every single time that I went through this corner, my wheel just wobbled. And this was all about the setup so I decided to do this setup because it was it was better in that corner it was more stable but also one of the I would I would call them the problematic parts of this one was you never really knew what kind of setup the guy in front of you has or the back so if he's running a high down for setup or if he's running a low down for setup so you can see in this section a combination of dirty air and different setups mean that I will most likely lose two and a half seconds by the end of this section. So in only one section, I'm losing about two and a half to about maybe even three seconds. I think this was this was an example where I lost two and a half seconds, but there were some occasions where I was actually even losing more than that in my previous race. So it was quite challenging. It was quite difficult, but I got myself into position um, where, you know, actually my race was going pretty well. So P6, I can see the guy in front of me uh, having, uh, having a penalty, of course, and this means if you ever have a second penalty, you're losing about a second, maybe even more, on the straight. And I got myself into P5, and once again, you can really see the difference now. I'm not in dirty air right now, and you can see that I'm actually not losing that much time. So I'm losing a little bit of time because the other guy uh, who's leading the race has probably a high down for a setup, and he can pretty much do this whole section better, but I'm not losing two and a half seconds. I'm not losing that much. So that's the difference. If you're behind someone, if you're in that dirty air or not, it makes a lot of difference. So instead of losing two and a half seconds, by the end of this whole section, I was losing maybe a second, second and a half, maybe. So that was definitely a huge difference. So if you were behind someone, it was really, really, it was really difficult to follow him. So on the straight, you can use the slipstream, you can definitely use the benefit of the slipstream on this whole straight, on, even on the next one, you got some decent areas where it actually serves a purpose, but in, in the last corner, in the last section, it's quite difficult. And I think this was actually, uh, this was kind of the moment where my race was decided. If, if the Finnish guy went for that position, if he retook that fifth place, I probably could have had a completely different race. So he actually gave me a little push and he said, you know what, I have a half a second penalty and one lap later I will most likely, I will most likely serve that penalty, I'm gonna lose a second and a half. And this is another situation, I was just waiting until someone makes a mistake and Cristiano did exactly that. It was, it was bumpy over the curbs, it was definitely unpredictable and that's exactly what happened to him. I watched the replay and just a little bump over the curb and that was it, it was completely over. So it wasn't completely over race, he lost two positions, but you know, over 17 laps, you need to avoid that, you need consistency. It doesn't matter if you're the quickest guy out there, if you make one mistake, you're gonna lose 15, 10, 15, 20 seconds and your car is gonna get damaged. 
so it's definitely not worth doing and this is where I started having a little problems and I can see this guy also had this problem and it was it was mostly due to the setup and it was very very easy to lose the car under braking in there it was extremely easy actually to lose it you had to you know you had to really focus on not losing the car and you can see this guy uh, he actually did a pretty good job I mean it's difficult to save something like this you can see the car is going all around the place and it was yeah this guy I don't know he said like what, what are you doing but either way focusing back on the race and I'm into p3 I'm into p3 and I'm actually having a little look up there and all of a sudden instead of losing to the guy in front of about 10 15 seconds now the lead dropped to about four and a half so something must have happened and I watched the replay later and it's the same corner it's the same corner same car probably even the same setup and probably the same problem but yeah you can probably see the difference it does it make so he had a little bit of damage and now in this whole section he was so much close uh, I mean I, I was so much closer and I could have uh, could have easily got that move even on the outside so damage meant a lot of difference and also another thing that meant a lot of difference was the fuel and this was two laps later I just I was actually just looking at the guy up in there and I didn't know when was he going to pit and he pitted in lap number eight but I decided to you know get the most out of let's say a light car I mean it was definitely wasn't light and even on these tires it just wasn't exactly the most drivable thing in the world and like the easiest thing to drive but the fuel meant that I was I was actually really light at this point and I wanted to avoid these situations you can see how am I stabilizing the car here so a little bit of power going down and you know I almost lost it at this point though so this was the risk that I took instead of you know uh, getting into the pits changing the tires and eventually getting the most on the fresh set of tires I decided to wait a little bit more you can see that the fuel was really really uh, really really low and also that meant that I can I can pretty much put uh, really good lap times now because my car is light but on the other hand the tires are not exactly in that perfect shape so it was kind of difficult to get through that corner and then in this lap number 10 I decided you know what it's it's time to pit I got fuel for one more lap but it's definitely not working uh, worth taking that much of a risk and it wasn't and I got back into a p4 so it wasn't the best possible position on the track I mean but I knew that the other guys in front of me had to pit once again so I realized that except uh, except for Busi, so he was a Spaniard. He took I, I would say that he took the most out of this whole situation, and he was definitely doing a good job running stable, consistent lap times, and that was the key to success in this race. Because 17 laps at Lassard, it's it's difficult to do. It's definitely difficult to do in this car. Even when you're running like five, six laps, it's difficult to keep the control of the car. And now I know the Italian behind me. He's got pace, but he's also got a little penalty. And I know he's always on the edge and he's definitely... I would say that he was definitely a little bit quicker than me at this point, but I think his setup was a little bit riskier. So it was kind of easier for him to make a mistake, but it was also easier uh, to get, uh, let's say, a better lap time overall. So he was most likely quali uh, he most likely yeah qualified well, and then in the race he suffered a little bit more just because the car was sketchy all the time, and then he made a couple of the same mistakes, basically the same things over again. But you know th the mistake that actually cost him the win was yeah most likely the most common mistake I would say uh, that we all had. So now lap 12 and I am 1.2 seconds behind Busi and this is this is kind of the point where I realized I only need I need two and a half tenths to get into that slipstream and I got a decent shot and now this happened I was like yeah that's a one second penalty and the one second penalty means that he's not only gonna lose one second he's most likely gonna lose 1.8 even up to two seconds so that's a quite a huge difference and I guess that's how GT7 works at this point. So when he's he was serving his uh, one second penalty, I was like 1.3, 1.4 seconds behind and you can see how easy it is for me to take this lead. And I was like, okay, I started in P7 and all of a sudden lap number 12, I'm leading this race. I never thought I was going to, you know, I was actually going to be leading this race. And I was quite surprised in just how all of this happened because... I was I was playing it safe to be honest. I had a couple of situations where I was like, huh, you know, losing the car or maybe not. But yeah, 
it was it was quite difficult to keep the car under control for 17 laps and this is probably where i made uh, made a mistake that could have cost me the whole race so it wasn't a big mistake but you can actually see the gap is going down so much so it was around one second and that's all i needed and at this point you can see for the next corner you can see how close it got it it was incredibly co close and i knew that it, he has a he has that slipstream he's gonna take it <laughs> you know if he has it on the straight he was definitely about to go for that move and i realized you know what for the next couple of corners i need to make the car stable but i also need to make the car quick so i need to take a certain amount of risk and i was really really low on fuel and i didn't really know what to do and here at this point i almost lost the car and i was like okay i need to keep it under control so this thing is going to happen if i keep the car under control and you can see we got incredibly close all four of us so from p1 to p4 it was getting incredibly close but then i realized this is the last chance that he got and i get and i got kind of into the safe zone i would say putting uh putting brake and balance to zero to rotate the car a little bit better but i knew that at this point he's not going to be able to get that place it's going to be simply impossible just the dirty air is such a huge factor in this race and I just have to keep it under control not to pick up a penalty not to run out of fuel and everything fuel will, be, will fine. be fine and this is I guess the section where I said to myself you know what take it easy you don't have to be quick here you just have to bring it across the finish line and there it was guys there it was <laughs> let's go guys let's go let's go guys oh man Jeez, in the end, I thought I thought he was gonna get me, but I got six places. It's a win, guys. It's a win. It's a win. We need to take a screenshot of this. 377.